We're here at uh, the CP Auto Tech shop here today. Uh, it's pretty quiet during COVID-19. I'm working on the 2007 Pontiac G5 2.2 liter Ecotec engine and we have a check engine light and we're going to go through the diagnostic step to um, get rid of that code and uh, get this thing back to normal. So this is how we do it. Um, sorry about the, the view, I would have liked to have screen recorded this, but uh, things weren't working out today. The reason I said that they would kind of maybe go together is that I have two codes. One's for a mass airflow sensor, low frequency, and then I have an intake air temperature uh, sensor, high voltage. And the reason that um, I think that they could be the same problem is that this is a combination intake air temperature and mass airflow sensor right here. And as soon as I have a code, I just want to make sure um, that I check the connections for this, that it's mounted properly, and that I don't see maybe any big uh, mass airflow leaks or holes around it, and that the harness doesn't look like it's been tampered with. And I think this is a fairly good example of what a 2.2 liter Ecotec should look like. So, we're going to chase this P0113 code. Just because I think intake air temperature is an easier um, code to chase because I know what the temperature should be in the, in the shop here, okay? I don't always know exactly what the mass airflow um, should be, even though I know what it should be fairly close to. I'm going to chase one and that's the one I've chosen. So what I'm going to initially do is I'm going to get some, let's get some data. I think we need to see data because I know I have an intake air temperature problem. I'm kind of curious what I've got going on first. And that's what I've got going on. I have intake air temperature sitting at minus 40, okay? Now, anybody that's worked on uh, vehicles before or GM products, um, we know what it means when we have a flat line of minus 40, okay? Let's open up the mass airflow sensor. And I have a complete solid line of 1.49. So I know that's not true. Air definitely varies coming into the engine. These two flat lines are false numbers. They're what the computer sees right now, but I know that that's not legit. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go to my service manual. And we're gonna diagnose. Like I say, I gotta start with one of the codes. You can't do them both at the same time. So why not? Do the one that I think is the easiest. If they both have the same problem, great. If they have different problems, then I'll have to do one at a time. So there's my P0113. I have to pick the one for the 2.2 liter engine. Make sure you don't pick it for the 2 liter engine, it is different. Okay. It says to perform the diagnostic system vehicle check, and I definitely have done that. This vehicle had a fully charged battery. It starts up uh, fine. Uh, my scanner communicates to and from um, this engine trainer right here. Um, I've done a visual of the system to see if there was anything obvious that was going on here, and everything checked out. As a mechanic, um, I know what diagnostic system check is. Um, if you don't, you should be clicking on that and going through those steps because you could find your problem, okay? So, um, here's some fault information. It says that a P0113 could be high resistance open. Let's face it, high resistance and opens are kind of the same thing almost, okay? Not really, but kind of, all right? And or it could be a short to voltage on this wire. So if this wire were to see a short to voltage or high resistance or had an open, it would set a P0113. This low reference wire, um, same thing. If it had high resistance, opens or short. The intake air temperature sensor is a variable resistor that measures the temperature of the air entering the engine. So there's two wires on the intake air temperature sensor, okay? Even though 
This sensor has five wires. Three of them are for the mass airflow sensor. Two of them are for the intake air temperature sensor. So we're only gonna be doing testing on two wires here. The sensor signal and low reference. Um, the engine control module supplies five volts to the sensor signal circuit and supplies the ground to the low reference circuit. So pretty much it gets five volts. This, this resistor is gonna change the five volts to something else and that something else will be the temperature of the engine hopefully. Now, it's not working properly right now because it reads minus 40. And what a minus 40 means is that this wire or this wire has an open or a short to voltage. So there's my, that's what's happening in the circuit. Where is the open or the short to voltage? Well, it could be in the computer, the wires or the sensors. So we're gonna find out where it is and we're gonna fix the problem today, okay? I'm not worried about short to grounds because if there was a short to ground in this wire, the data would read plus 150 degrees Celsius. But we're not reading that, we're reading minus 40 today, okay? And here's the normal range. This is what the sensor should read. It should read as low as minus 39 and only as high as 120. So whenever you see a minus 40, you know there's something wrong, okay? The sensor does not read as low as minus 40, even when it's minus 40 outside. And I might correct myself, I've never actually checked the data for that. Someone can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So a 113 is set when the ECM detects that the intake air temperature is less than minus 39 for more than five seconds. Well, as we saw on our screen here and as it's still running we're still at minus 40 so we're way over five seconds even though i've wiggled the wires and such okay well let's get after this all right there's some diagnostic aids here and pretty pretty much what this comes down to is that if the engine was cold and it was just sitting here um and i and it didn't run for let's say eight hours or something the intake air temperature sensor should be very close to what the coolant temperature sensor reads. Those two um, should equalize eventually. If they don't, the computer knows there's a problem. So the computer didn't run the car like it was minus 40 out today because it knew it's not, it, it knows it's not minus 40. The coolant temperature sensor probably read 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius because that's what temperature is in the shop today. So the computer didn't go ahead and dump a whole bunch of fuel in and get fooled by that. And even if it did, the oxygen sensor would have picked up, whoa, 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 way too much fuel, back it off. It turned the light on because it's like, hey, 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 this number, there's no way it's minus 40 out. We tried to run it under minus 40 conditions and it ran horrible, okay? It had lots of data to say there was something wrong. So circuit system verification. If the engine was off for eight hours or greater, those two should be within 15 degrees of one another, okay? Engine running, observe the scan tool parameters. It should be between minus 39 and plus 120. It's not. So we verified that there's a circuit system fault. So we're gonna go into circuit system testing. Step one, turn the key off and disconnect the sensor. So we're gonna get after this. Hopefully I can fit this all in one video. Squeeze and pull. Ignition off. Test for less than five ohms of resistance between low reference circuit terminal D and ground. So I have to test between terminal D and ground. I don't know what terminal D is. So what I'm gonna do is find out. All these links have been put in Protoman so I could find it. So I'm gonna scroll through until I see the combination mass airflow sensor intake air. I've done this before and I know that they don't actually list the intake air. So I'm going after mass airflow. There it is. Terminal D is a tan wire. It's the low reference circuit. So D, as I look at it, should be second from the left. So I'm going to connect to that and I'm going to measure the resistance. 
bear with me, but I do have most of the tools close. As you'll see, uh, I do not have safety glasses on, so all my students should be very jealous of this right now. I need a smaller pen. I need the little red guy. So second from the left is D. Okay. And I need to measure between D and ground. So I'm gonna grab a jumper wire. Here's one. To use this jumper wire but first I'm gonna confirm because this is a CP auto tech jumper wire I want to confirm that this jumper wire is decent so I'm trying to zero my multimeter it's really hard to find a zeroed multimeter here at Crocus Plains anymore but 0.3 or 4 so I know I have a margin of 0.3 or 4 to deal with there so I tested my multimeter I tested my uh, connection. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my multimeter between terminal D and ground for the battery. So I'm gonna run this jumper cable, hopefully you can hear me, to the ground of the battery. I do not run these two engine grounds. I don't believe in taking that chance that I've got a good ground. Don't know if I'm yelling or what, we'll figure it out. So, I'm gonna take the negative of the multimeter and connect it to the negative of the battery on my jumper wire. And then I'm gonna measure the resistance on my other wire. I uh, double check everything here. Especially when I get a really, really bad number. When I get a really, really bad number, I'm thinking, oh, that could be hoot. I also think, man, maybe I'm doing my test wrong. Yeah, so I was getting like, just so you know, I was getting like 98 ohms. And I was like, whoa, 98 ohms, that's really high. I'm supposed to have less than five. And I could have easily have said, well, that's, yeah, it's 98 ohms. But when you're checking resistance, your connection is really, really important. So my connection at the battery wasn't that great, okay? Anyways, I'm under five ohms. I was connected here before. I'm gonna do it again. So I wanna show you how fast you could go down the wrong road here. Oh, now it wants to work just fine. Okay, let's say 1.6 ohms. I think I tried to zero my meter and I got 0.4, so 1.3 ohms or so is my test results. We're gonna go back to that step. And it says to test for less than five ohms of resistance between terminal D and ground. I did that, I had less than five. So that means yay, we did good. It tested the way that it should. On to step three. Do not, do not go to if greater than specified range. And that's what was really important about me going and fixing that ground because I could have gone on to that step and I would have been wrong. It was just a bad connection and this is gonna happen a lot when you're doing testing. So um, just be patient. So I go on to step three because step two tested out. It says ignition on, verify the scan tool intake sensor parameter is less than minus 39. I'm gonna turn the key on. Let's remember, like we already knew it read minus 40, but we've now, we have the sensor disconnected right now. Okay, so this is different. This is different than looking at it the first time. So keep that in mind. We're gonna go back to here. Um, it says that we don't have communication because we had the key off. There's our data. Intake air is minus 40. 
okay? Very consistently. I'm gonna give it the wiggle test and everything I can over here, over by the computer and here, minus 40. Now, minus 40 is what it's supposed to have because an open in the intake air temperature sensor is supposed to get you minus 40. So it's just verifying that the computer is reading properly is what it's doing in this step. Okay? Ignition on, verify that it is less than minus 39. Well, let's remember that if we had a number line here and this was zero and this was plus 40 and this was negative 40, minus 39 is like right here. So it is, is it less than minus 39? Yes, it is. Even though 40 is a bigger number, negative 40 is a smaller number. Okay, so don't get caught in the lingo here. Because step three tested out properly, we don't go to if greater than, we now go to step four. Step four tells me to install a three amp fuse jumper wire between signal circuit terminal E and ground. Okay, so I can do that between terminal E. I don't have to go back to the terminal descriptions because I remember what E is. E is the one on the far left. So I'm gonna grab my jumper wire here. Get rid of my multimeter. And I'm gonna make my three amp fused jumper wire. This is where if I was really good with um, videos, I would scratch out that four and make it a three, but hey, I didn't have a three. So get over it, truck or car. You're, you're about to get four amps on that circuit, okay? Now this is fuse protection for the computer at this point. We're going to hook up to terminal E which is the one on the far left hand side. And it even says three amps on that terminal, okay? And we're supposed to connect to ground. So we should still be connected to ground over here, which we are. I'm gonna hook up. Just to show you. I have a connector shoved into the far left terminal, which is E. I'm gonna confirm that E is a TAN wire. Get my hairy hand out of the way. D and E are both TAN wires. E is on the far left. I've used my jumper wires with my fuse going to ground. The key is on. And what I'm supposed to do is verify the scan tool parameter is greater than 149 degrees Celsius. And I think I know what it's gonna say here. Oh, of course it reads in Fahrenheit. Henderson, you're so stupid. Is greater than 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I think I know what it's gonna say. Back to here again. 302 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you short terminal E to ground, your computer's default is 302 degrees Fahrenheit and it knew that because that's what we're doing. So these last couple steps were doing a couple things. And this is what they were doing. They were testing your ECM that if you open up um, this, that it would default to minus 40. Now we shorted to ground that wire and the computer is supposed to read over 300 degrees Fahrenheit and it does. So what that does is because we did all the testing right here and these two wires go to the computer, we have now eliminated the wiring to the computer and the computer from being a fault. Pretty cool, okay? We also tested that, uh, the resistance to ground, okay? Just to make sure we had a good ground. That's what we did. Is greater than, my, than 300? Yes, it was. So, if the circuits test normal, test 
the intake air temperature sensor now. Okay, so here's how you test it. It's a very short paragraph. Measure and record the resistance of the sensor at various ambient temperatures. Then compare those measurements to temperature versus resistance chart. So well, let's open that chart. And it talks about what the resistance of the sensor should be. Well, in degrees Celsius, here in the shop, I know I'm wearing a sweater, but the engine's been running. 20 degrees Celsius, that's where we're at. Or 68 degrees Fahrenheit, should have a resistance of 3,520 ohms. Let's find out. Because we're testing the component now, we're not testing the wiring anymore. We actually should take, I'm gonna take the sensor right out. The nice thing about working in a high school is that you only have to take out half the fasteners because that's the only ones that are still around. It's beautiful. People come in for an oil change and it's like, hey, you know what, I only have to take off one of your air filter screws because we lost the other ones last time. We were here. Of course, this is all just for jokes. You guys can all calm down now whether it's students watching this or people outside our pro program going, hey, are you guys that horrible? We're not. We're pretty pro in here. As we have kids doing things just like this, this type of testing on the daily. Where did I go? Well, I went to go get my jumper wires so I could do this, uh, this demo for you. Okay. So I've got my two test leads just shoved into my sensor there. I'm gonna check the video to see that you can see that. That's the combination mass airflow sensor, intake air temperature sensor. Um, if I don't know which way it is, cause I could put it in either way, okay? I can just check to see which way the connector goes in. And I would totally see that I'm on the two wrong wires. Oh yeah, woo woo. All right. So if I was gonna connect these wires in, my two tan wires would go here, okay? <laughs> so that's what we're doing. And we're gonna test the resistance of this sensor. Um, I'm gonna use the jumper wires. Excuse me while I do this, because if I do the jumper wires, you can, I can grab the camera and I can bring it over. Nothing like a good video going wrong, eh? I think we're still doing pretty good here though. So resistance is just measuring the ohms across these two wires and there's a little resistor in there. So at different temperatures, it should read different numbers. We're gonna focus on the ones that we can control. And the ones that we can control is, let's say, room temperature, and then changing it with the temperature of my hand. Okay, I've done this all good. All right, so I have my multimeter set to ohms, okay? And I just have it on the little beeper version, so if I get something, it'll beep. Um, my black wire, Let's just follow this along here. My black wire goes into this lead, which then jumps back around into this connector here. And my red lead is connected to this one over here right now. Okay, this is a manual ranging multimeter. So I have to, I have to select ranges. And at the temperature that we are in here right now, and this thing might be a little warmer than that because it just came out of the car, it should read around 3000 ohms. Well, this mode only reads to 200 ohms. So right here, that would only read as high as 200 ohms. Anything higher than that, it would give you the infinite symbol. And that's what infinite is. Infinite is like open or very high resistance. One, and it's just nothing, right? I'm in a 2000 ohm mode and I'm still not reading anything. 20,000 ohms, I'm not reading anything. 
200,000 ohms, I'm not reading anything. 2 million ohms, 20 million ohms. I'm not reading anything. Well, right from the start of all of this, It said on this chart, and I was paying attention when, it, when I read this, that an open in any of those wires would cause a P0113. That open could have been in the computer, it could have been in the wiring, and it could have been in the sensor. I think we just found it. So, I wanna verify this first. So what I have here is in my hand, and this would not be uncommon at GM, you'd have all these sitting there, and even at a lot of small shops, you might have a mass airflow sensor intake air temperature, and you always could just pop it out of another car. 2.2 liter Ecotechs are pretty easy to find. I'm going to plug it into the wires the same way and do the same test. Because I really like to know, I don't like to guess. Okay, I don't like guessing. Look at that. I don't have infinite anymore. I was reading on a 20 million scale. And there we go. The 2K scale gives me infinite, remember? Because it's higher than 2,000 ohms. So if I read on the 20,000 ohm scale I get 2.17 and remember there's a K so that means a thousand so 2150 ohms 2150 2140 on on the new intake air temperature sensor so let's see where that puts us 21 It puts us between 30 and 35 degrees, okay? Which is close. This is, it's no magic. Uh, and then maybe if I were to blow on this. I've got it to 1,990 ohms or so. 1,990 ohms would be between 30 and 35 degrees. And you know what, pretty close to my body temperature. So um, we found the problem. That is the problem. Let's fix it. I'm gonna shut the key off. Usually when you disconnect and connect sensors, you should have uh, the key in the off position and they did prompt me to do that in the service manual. So we're all good. I'm gonna get rid of the old mass airflow sensor. And try to hold it still. Uh, videos don't do, really do uh, anything for you there but you can actually see the open in this one. I'm gonna slide the new mass airflow intake air temperature sensor in. I'm gonna tighten the one out of the two screws. Yes, this would probably affect my mass airflow sensor readings for those uh, of you that are educated and stuff. There's the new sensor in there. Here's the old sensor. Maybe it'll... If you can see right on this terminal here, the, the thermistor, the little resistor in there that measures temperature is gone. It's not even in there anymore. Okay, for some reason it's history. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this vehicle.
And I think we've already verified our fix with our multimeter testing. But as a final step, I think reading intake air temperature and mass airflow is the best way we have to fix this. And there we go. 71 degrees Fahrenheit here in the shop. I'm very happy with that number. And I have an idling four cylinder engine giving me three grams per second of airflow. Beautiful. So let's remember that I had coats. I'm gonna clear them. I'm gonna leave the engine running because I'm a, I'm a bad boy. I'm just like that. I'm gonna go back to the codes menu. Display codes. Does anybody else look through their camera while they're doing things? That's silly, why am I looking through the camera? And I have no codes present. Okay, so this was a cheap component today. What most people would have done, what a lot of shops would have done is looked at that P0113 and ordered one of these right away. You know what, if you don't open it, you can return it back to Piston Ring or Auto Part, Auto Part Central or Canadian Tire or Napa, wherever you buy your parts anyways. And you had this sitting on hand. Now, some shops would have just thrown it in and been done with it. But in this half hour video, I fully diagnosed and was sure that it was this cheap little part. But let's remember next time it might not be this cheap little part. It might be something that's more expensive, like $500 or whatever. Maybe, just maybe, you diagnosed it that was the computer because you tried one of these. And, well, that didn't fix it, so now I'm going to throw a $1,000 computer at it. And it could have just been a broken wire inside this harness. So do the proper procedures. I got a multimeter. Um, I used a fuse jumper wire and a jumper wire pretty much and a scan tool. If you're diagnosing codes, these are all things that are in your shop. Let's not be lazy and let's do it right. So mechanics uh, keep a, a good name rather than that name of just throwing parts of things. Anyways, that's my video on how to diagnose an engine code. I hope you enjoy it.